Okay, so today is February the 7th of 2021, and we're just going to continue with our video series, our, our ministry series, How to Engage in and Exercise Effective Christian Communication, Indeed. The D today is walk. So um, we know what walk means, but when I looked it up in the in the dictionary, it just says to move at a regular pace by let, by lifting and setting down each foot in turn, never having both feet off the ground at once, an act of traveling or excursion on foot. And if we're looking at this in the context of walk in the Bible, um, it's just talking about how we're living our lives, basically. Um, and then the focus scripture is Philemon 1, 6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And the question we've been keeping in our mind, what message does my faith walk communicate? And of course we know it's not for condemnation, for comparison or measurement. It's just to remind us that our faith walk does communicate something. Um, in fact, the Bible says we are living epistles. The scriptures for this um, for this um, for this uh, particular word of walk, we looked at. Well, Bible study participants looked at Ephesians two, one to ten, and then I also looked at for the teaching video Second Corinthians, and I looked at the entire fourth fourth chapter so some points that I want to further pull out from that teaching video um, is that God is the best person to take a walk with so when 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 you think about taking a walk think about taking a walk with someone um, you're gonna take a walk through through a park you're gonna take a walk um, you know um, on a tour you're taking a walk for exercise Whatever you're taking a walk for, you're taking a walk with someone. Think about what that means. So when you're walking with someone, it's not just about the movement of your feet. It's about the experiences that you have along the way. It's about the journey. It's about the conversations. It's about the things you notice and experience along the way. And so when we're thinking about walking with God, it's the same thing. We're thinking about our lives. This is a, a lifelong walk. It, it's from the moment that you become a Christian um, to, into eternity. So this is a walk that is beyond actually life, this life, because it extends into eternity. It's a companionship. It's a relationship. It's um, enjoying things together noticing things together conversing together for a lifetime and beyond with God it's about having someone there so if you're walking with a friend and you stumble and fall and maybe you you scrape your elbow or your knee or something like that they're there to help you and they will help you if they're right there it's the same thing with God when we're traveling with God throughout life if we come into situations that cause us harm or something happens that's not pleasant, well, God is there. And so he's there to, to, um, to experience life with us, but also to, to help us when we need him. And he's there. He, he's God, so he can handle whatever may come, whatever may go. And since all of the beauty that people, you know, people take walks sometimes, they, they go on, um, you know, vacations and they want a, a tour guide to show them around, show them the best places to see uh, wherever they've gone. Well, God made everything. God made the world. He made everything that's here. All the things that people go and they look at and even the things that people have created like the paintings and the, um, the statues and, and things of beauty like that. Well, God gave people the talent to make those things. So at the end of the day, all of it goes back to God. So we can take a walk with the person that made all of the beauty and made and made uh, and gave people the talent to produce things of beauty. We can take a walk with him every day. 
And when you think about that, it's such a privilege and an honor um, that we are walking with the very creator of the universe, the one that made everything, the one that can help us with any problem, the one that can comfort us, us the one who can counsel us. He's, he's an advocate for us. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he's the one that we are walking with from the moment we become a Christian into eternity. The quality of the walk depends on um, us. It depends on how much of a relationship we want to have with God. Do we want to have a relationship with him where we are communicating with him on a regular basis? Do we want to have a relationship with him that we are close with him and he's close with us? It's totally up to us. He will save our soul when we accept him as Lord and Savior. But how close we share that relationship, it depends really completely on us because he's always there. And he's always willing to have a close and personal relationship with anyone who wants to have that with him. The next point is walking with God leads us to our best lives. So when you think about it this way, God is the one who made us. God, God is the one who made everything. God's standard and his measurement for a best life has nothing to do with um, the things that man measures as a best life. Because he will, he will give you your best life right where you are. And the best life that he gives you is beyond just you. It has to do with the purpose that he put, that he created you in the first place. And he, he has created everyone to affect humanity and not just um, their own life. So you think about the people that created the, the, uh, the first airplane. And I know it was brothers. I can't, re I can't place their name right now, but they created the airplane. And they, I know that they were laughed at, but yet look at what they did. And now look at how it's affected humanity. So they were living their, they were living up to their best selves, even when maybe circumstances or people didn't notice it or acknowledge it. And maybe they didn't even know it themselves, but they left something behind that affected so many generations to come and enhance the quality of life. So when God looks at our best lives, it's not the measurement that man looks at because he's created us for a greater cause and a greater purpose than people's minds can wrap around because nobody could see into the future at that time to see what an effect those airplanes would have on the lives of generations to come. But God can see things. He sees all of eternity at once because he's outside of time. And so God sees everything. So our best lives has nothing to do with the experiences of life. In fact, sometimes people have to go through bad things. They have to go through difficulties. They have to go through struggles. They have to be ridiculed and mocked in order for the best self to come out. It's like a pressing of the grapes. In order to get the best um, quality of, of um, you know, to get the wine out of the grapes, they must be crushed. And so sometimes in people's lives, there's a crushing that must happen in order to bring out their best selves. And it's not easy when a person is going through it. And when people are looking in on it, it doesn't look like a best life is coming out of that. But remember, when you're walking with God, he will use everything and work everything out for the good of those that believe in him and that are called according to his purposes. And then the next point, walking with God will lead us to uncover and discover the best versions of ourselves. So in difficulties and trials, a lot of times we don't want to go through that. We don't, we don't want to go through things that hurt us or cause us any type of distress but sometimes those are the very things that cause people to become so strong and to be able to help other people. Strength, God is building muscle. It is, it is a muscle of the very soul 
when when people go through difficulties yet they hold on to that trust in God that faith and the things that they can't see at that time yet they believe it because they believe that God knows better than their own thoughts and their own mind and so they choose to trust him over what their eyes see or what the circumstances look like and a great strength comes out of that so God will lead us to our best lives and walking with God is in truth and it's about truth because God knows everything and everything that he created is based on truth if he put the sun in the sky and 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 it was a fake sun think about what what would happen nothing would live everything that God does is with integrity and truth and so when you walk with him when we walk with him we must be willing to face the truth and sometimes he exposes things in us and he starts to lead us to corrective behaviors now if we resist that then we stay in our um in the error of our ways but if we will let God correct us and then he will be getting us to our best selves think about a car's alignment a car can drive but if it is not properly aligned then it is not driving um, to the degree of its best self and so corrective things have to be done it's the same thing with the human life along the way there are corrections that have to take place God will correct us sometimes the correction causes us to confront things within ourselves that we don't want to be honest about or we don't want to see but if we submit to God to the correction of God he will align us perfectly so that we can pursue and live out our best lives and then the next point is that God will turn the lemons of life into lemonade so I talked about that statement about um, that common statement about if life gives you lemons make lemonade well I talked about it in relation to God how he can literally cause that to happen um, in, a, in a very literal way so the things that happen in life that leave a bitter taste those things that we don't enjoy they're not pleasant but when we mix those things with the living water of the Bible and the gospel that the Bible says is sweeter than honey then we can literally make lemonade out of the lemons in life and those are the points that I wanted to further you know pull out from some of the things that I said in the video in the teaching video so now I just want to go ahead to the scripture and I think um Anik reads this week in his Ephesians 2 1 to 10 could you read that Anik? yeah one second okay Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, thank you, Anique, and may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. 
So I'm just going to go over those. Um, the, I'm just going to take a closer look at this at the verses. So the very first verse. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. This is telling us who man is. Every man without God. It says that we are dead in our trespasses. So it's telling us there is no, no eternal life outside of God. Not Because to be separated from God is death. And, and um, when Jesus finally judges the world, if we if our name is not found in the lamb's book of life then we will be um eternally dead cut off from god um so um so paul here is saying that all of us basically all, every person he was was dead in trespasses and sins until god quickened us by saving our soul verse 2 wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's furthering what I just said. And, and if you notice, it's calling the devil the prince of the power of the air. The devil is the one that upsets things and causes the difficulties um, that, that exist. He's the one that stirs those things up. Verse 3, among whom also we we all had our conversation in past times, uh, in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So he's reminding those that are saved, he's saying, all of us in times past were just like that. Uh, so basically, uh, Paul is saying, but for the mercy of God, you know, you were just you were just like that before too. Verse four. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. So, so this is telling us that God, even when we were in our sins, God still loved us. Even at that time, God loves the entire world. He, his desire is that everyone be saved and that no one is lost. Um, let's see. Uh, and I, and I forgot to point out that our, the reason I pulled out this particular, um, uh, scripture is because that the word walked is found here. So I did already say it in verse, in uh, verse two, I forgot to point it out though. Um, and I just want to quickly go back to verse 2 because it said, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. So this is telling us, this is how we walked before we were saved. So now that we are walked, we should be walking differently. Christians should be walking differently than the world does. So now back to verse 6 again. And hath, and hath raised us up together and made us to sit, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So it spiritually, our spiritual location is seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus once we are saved. Um, and, and that's, you know, an interesting um, concept, but it's just letting us know our salvation is in Christ. So in him, because he is in heaven, we are there as well because we are in him and he is in us. And then verse seven, that in the, the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. This is saying that exceedingly, with exceeding riches, he will show um, with exceeding riches, his grace um, and his kindness towards us. So anyone that, is that knows the Lord and that is walking with him. If they were mean before, they can't remain mean if they're walking with God because the spirit of God, it's that's in God is the spirit of kindness. So if you are truly a Christian, truly living your lives 
uh, for God and you're walking with God, you can't hold on to a spirit of meanness, a spirit of looking at people in a negative, hateful way. Um, so anyone who's calling themselves a Christian, yet they find it easy to hate people and hate groups of people, they really need to examine themselves because there's a spirit of Christ that is kind. And that's what, when you're walking with God, that's what should be developing you in you as well, a spirit of kindness. Then verse eight, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He's telling us, basically all of us were sin sinful by nature. We are saved now, but it has nothing to do with us. It is because of the grace of God, because we decided to accept his free gift of salvation. That's the only reason we're saved, because we accepted the gift that God extended to us. Then verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk. There's our word again, that we should walk in them. What does it say we should walk in? Good works. That is what every Christian is supposed to be doing is walking in good works. That means we are doing good works works and that's how we walk with Christ so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and we can continue with the um with this with the discussion um so I'll go ahead and wrap it up now father God thank you so much for another opportunity to just learn about you to think about you to look at the Bible closer so that we can understand who who you are and who, who we are in you and how you want us to be. So that when we are talking about being a Christian, we are talking based on knowledge, based on the Bible. We are not speculating and we are not just repeating what we've heard other people say. We've not going, going off of a message that we heard. We are speaking based on knowledge that we have uncovered ourselves in your word from reading and studying your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for your word is precious and it will change our lives. Lord, help us to be better and walk with you. I ask that you will bless us and keep us, make your face shine upon us, lift up your countenance upon us, be gracious to us and give us peace. And everyone that agrees with that prayer can say amen. 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 Amen.